All right, I'm down here on the light board again because I want to walk you through a couple of the details of the two-dimensional experiments that we've just gotten acquainted with. And the first one I want to look at is a little bit about how this one works. The HSQC, it stands for Heteronuclear Single Quantum Correlation. Um, I have in other references seen it referred to as HETCOR or a heteronuclear correlation. Um, it's the one that tells us which carbons are attached to which protons. Now technically how it works is through coupling. What it really does is tells us which carbon is coupled to which proton. And it does this by looking for the large coupling constants. Remember, we've talked about this one before, the coupling constant between a proton and a carbon through one bond. In other words, the hydrogen directly attached to a carbon 13 is in the neighborhood of 130 hertz. And that is what this experiment looks for hydrogens with large coupling constants to C13. Okay? Now, in order to talk about this in a little more detail, uh, like I've done in other times in the past, I'm going to make up a fake molecule and talk a little bit about its HSQC spectrum. And the molecule is only going to have three carbons and three protons in it that we're going to take a look at. So the other parts of the molecule I'm just going to put in an X and a Y because I don't want it to be symmetric. I need to fill the other bonds, so I'll put a Z here. I'll put a Q there. I'll put a smiley face here. Um, I just don't want it to be symmetric, and I want just these three hydrogens to be in there. Furthermore, I'm going to give them just made-up chemical shifts. This one is at 1 ppm, 3 ppm, 4 ppm for the, car for the hydrogens. And even for the carbons, I'm going to use 10 ppm, 40 ppm, 30 ppm. So, fake molecule, a fake chemical shift, but it's going to illustrate the point. Now, if you, I went through and asked you, and hopefully you'd all be able to do this one pretty readily, what does the proton spectrum of this thing look like? What does the carbon spectrum look like? The proton spectrum is going to be fairly straightforward. One, two, three, four, and we're going to have a peak with one neighboring proton, so we're going to have a doublet at four. At three, we have a hydrogen with two neighbors, and since it's a fake molecule, we'll pretend that all the coupling constants are going to be the same, so we've got a triplet here. One, two, three, one to one to one triplet, or one to two to one triplet, excuse me. And then for the hydrogen, also coupled to three, another doublet. And that would be it, ignoring solvent and any other sort of thing. So there's our hydrogen spectrum. And then for the carbon, 10, 20, 30, 40, and so forth. For this one, pretty simple. Singlet here, singlet there, singlet there. This is the decoupled carbon spectrum. Now, the HSQC, the heteronuclear correlation, Remember, these 2D experiments are characterized by two frequency axes, and in our conventional presentation, this is the hydrogen presentation up here on the horizontal axis. And so I am going to put in the numbers here, one, two, three, four. And we see a representation generally, it's called a projection of the proton spectrum, because it does make looking at these things and seeing the correlations a lot easier. On the vertical axis, we see the carbon 13s, so 10, 20, 30, 40. And we see a representation of that spectrum here. Okay. And then it's, of course, the region in the middle here. That's the important one for our purposes. Now, what we are going to see when we look at the HSQC spectrum of this thing is essentially the following points. We're going to see the peak, we're going to see the proton at 1 ppm, and remember, 
at 1 ppm proton, that translates into, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 million hertz, 400 megahertz. For the carbons at 10 ppm, say, it's 10 ppm. We give it the same name, but that's 10 ppm on the carbon scale. Remember, the carbons, base frequency is in the neighborhood of 100 million hertz or 100 megahertz. So they're very, very different from each other. But what we're going to see when we look at the spectrum then is essentially a spot, a mark at the, P at the position 1-10. It's telling us that the proton at 1 ppm on the proton scale and the carbon at 10 ppm on the carbon scale are coupled to each other, are coupled with a large, roughly 130 hertz, coupling constant. And so that point, 1 on the proton scale, 10 on the carbon scale, shows up on the HSQC spectrum. That's one of the spots we've been looking at. For the proton at 3, we're in this area here, we're going to see that the proton at 3 is coupled to the carbon at 40 ppm on the carbon scale. So the point 340 is going to be the next one. So we're going to get a spot in that location. Finally, for the proton at 4 ppm, it's coupled to the carbon at 30. These are coupled together. So the next point that we're going to see highlighted here is 4 on the proton, 30 on the carbon. And that is our HSQC spectrum for this fake molecule. When we've analyzed this uh, in the previous video, and it's very common to do this if you have it electronically or on paper, is these are the correlations. The carbon at 30 is attached to the proton at 4 ppm. The carbon at 40 is attached to the proton at 3 ppm. And finally, the proton at 1 ppm is attached to the carbon at 10 ppm. There are the correlations. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep uh, some parts of this, because now I want to do the same kind of analysis, but for the cozy spectrum. So I'm going to leave parts of this, apply the magic eraser to others, and we'll pick it up from there. And the cozy experiment. Uh, the acronym is COSY. It stands for Correlation Spectroscopy, but technically this is a homonuclear experiment. Uh, it, it, what it looks at is which hydrogens are near which hydrogens. Technically, it's telling us which hydrogens are coupled to which hydrogens. So it works through coupling just like the HSQC does. It's like heteronuclear correlation, but now it's proton-proton. So I'm going to use exactly the same fake molecule for a moment, and we're going to see that this is the important one now. Carbons aren't involved here. Now remember, on the HS, on the COSY, the two axes, it's two frequency axes, one, two, three, four. But this time, both axes are occupied by the proton spectrum. I draw another proton here, doublet, triplet, doublet. Okay, and so there are the two spectra, the two frequency axes. It's homonuclear, proton, proton. Now, since this one is proton, proton, we're looking at the, let's first at hydrogen one here. And remember, since these, since it is both hydrogen 1 at 400 megahertz, technically, 1 ppm on the hydrogen, on the hydrogen uh, frequencies, 400 megahertz. For homonuclear correlation, we're going to get the following points to show up. We're going to get the point 1, 1, because it's the same frequency on both. And so this point is going to be a part of the cozy spectrum even though it's not from coupling information, but we have measured that frequency on both axes, both somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 megahertz. The same thing happens over here at the proton 
at 3 ppm. On this axis, we hit 3 ppm. On this axis, we hit 3 ppm. And so we get another spot there at 3, 3. And then, of course, it's also going to occur at 4, 4. This is the origin of the diagonal of the cozy spectra. And in fact, um, the one you've seen so far and the others you're going to see, the diagonal is often marked out fairly clearly. The, some of the software will even draw the line in, or in, in, in times past, in other versions of this, uh, I've had the students just simply take a ruler and draw the thing in, because the diagonal information, while, while kind of nice to look at, is not where the information is. We already know there's a peak at 1 and at 3 and at 4 ppm. It's the stuff not on the diagonal in the cozy spectrum that's critical. And those are the areas that you have to really look at. So it's you know, the, the heteronuclear correlation, HSQC, doesn't have this diagonal because the frequencies on one axis, 400 megahertz, on the second axis, carbon, 100 megahertz, they're so different from each other, we don't see the diagonal. On a homonuclear correlation, since the frequencies on both axes are the same, we do see the diagonal. So it's a bit of a distractor in there, but it's the stuff not on the diagonal that's critical for us. And so looking at proton 1, what we see is that the proton at position 1 is coupled to the proton at 3 ppm. 1 ppm is coupled to 3 ppm. And so what we are going to also measure, besides these diagonal default points, is we're going to measure the point 1, 3. In other words, 1 here and over to position 3 there. That is an off-diagonal point. It's technically called a cross-peak, and that's an informative one. Interestingly, proton at 3 is also coupled to proton at 1. So we also will see that point, the point 3, 1. So if I go, you know, 3 and then comma 1, we see that point as well. In fact, you will notice that these two points are essentially mere images of each other. They should be exactly as far apart from each other across the diagonal. This one off the diagonal in this direction, this one exactly 180 degrees in the opposite direction. And so it is also true that in a cozy spectrum, the lower quadrant and the upper quadrant are roughly at least mere images of each other. Let's continue now. The point at, or the proton at 3 ppm is also coupled to the proton at 4 ppm. So the point 3, 4 will be a part of the spectrum. But of course, 4 is coupled to 3, so the point 4, comma 3 will also be here. And there is the mirror image of these two correlations. That is going to be the cozy spectrum of this, uh, of our fake little molecule here. And again, the diagonal is usually marked in. It's nice to see, but don't get distracted by it. That's not where the information is. The information of a cozy is the peaks not on the diagonal. Also, you do not have to worry about the fact, oh my gosh, there are four cross peaks here. No, there are only two. Remember, this quadrant and that quadrant simply are mere images of each other. I usually like to work in the lower quadrant. That's just the way I do it. Uh, some students prefer the upper or use a mix of both. I don't really care. And in fact, if I have these on paper, I will literally have a ruler out to make sure I get these things to line up because it's not common that, you know, three and four, you know, usually you're looking at 2.25 and 3.67 and that's a little bit harder to see. It's also nice when it's on a computer screen where you can, you know, use the crosshairs on the, on the computer graphics to get things to correlate. But remember, what this is telling us is the proton at 4 and the proton at 3 must be coupled to each other. If I use this cross peak, I would get the proton at 3 is coupled to the proton at 4. It repeats exactly the same information. So you notice I haven't drawn it in because if I draw all of these in and use all the cross peaks, 
with that diagonal. It does get confusing looking pretty quickly. The other bit of information, the proton at 3 is coupled to the proton at 1. So drawing that one in, and yes, I would, you know, if I were using a ruler, my lines would probably look a little better, but oh well. The proton at 3 and the proton at 1 are coupled to each other. And so there are the correlations, and this is, you know, is a very nice experiment for telling us you know, which hydrogens are near coupled to which other hydrogens. Technically, it allows you to even walk through uh, a significant chunk of a molecule by moving from one correlation to the next. Now, what is that correlated to? What is that correlated to? And so forth. It's also a way to untangle or to help untangle some of those really complicated looking proton spectra where a cyclic molecule, for example, where everything's just overlapping itself. Sometimes, often, a cozy spectrum can help pull that stuff apart and allow you to uh, make uh, assignments to various peaks based upon this when in the regular proton spectrum it's just this god-awful looking mess of stuff all piled up on top of each other and all split into all kinds of bizarre patterns. So together these two experiments, HSQC and COSY, heteronuclear correlation, homonuclear correlation, are really powerful, particularly when you get to away, away from the simpler molecules and into the uh, larger molecules. They're very common in big molecules, polymer chemistry, biochemistry, studying biomolecules and natural products. There are other two-dimensional experiments. In fact, there's you know, literally hundreds and hundreds of them. We're going to see a couple of others uh, and uh, but not, you know, not nearly all of them that are possible. Because to be honest, some of them are being created right now. This is an active area of research in the, in the science of chemistry, biochemistry, and even in biology, figuring out ways to extract even more information via NMR from more and more complicated molecules.